All right, I'm going to do kind of a thin, fast review of um, the uh, FantasyFlightGames.com Games Workshop Warhammer 40,000 book called Rogue Trader. And um, I'm going to try to give you guys a good look at this. Hopefully that's clear. But um, what you've got here is you've got a whole lot of stuff. I haven't run this system yet, so I really can't say I've battle tested it. But the, the the universe and the world building, I think for Warhammer is like unbelievably awesome. Um, their systems, who knows, right? I'm a big Palladium and old original '80s AD and D kind of guy. So, but you know what? You make the games what you want. But this kind of mixes. How do I describe this? So Warhammer, right, is like this um, It's kind of feudalistic monarchy kind of like mixed with like magic. And they've got like the church in there, right, or something like a church, like the big Catholic church. Like this big, like there's a king emperor, right, the god emperor, who's kind of like, I mean, hopefully I'm getting all this somewhat right. But basically... The original Warhammer was sort of like against chaos and evil and all kinds of evil magic stuff. That's like really, it's almost like Conan Hyborian Age magic and evil are kind of intertwined a lot and um, corrupting a lot. And um, the Warhammer fantasy was kind of like that. And you're fighting whether it's chaos beastmen or chaos evil paladins or, cha you know, these evil force of chaos is a little Cthulhu-ish too, right? Because these chaos gods are out there and it's kind of like hands-on, right? Like it's like, you ever seen that like Greek myth where the gods kind of like take apart in things or they give people special powers or these, there's these semi, you know, magical demigods around and stuff. So this takes this way the heck out in the future, 40, I don't know if it's 40,000 years in the future or something like that. So now you've got spaceships, but still, if you see this guy, he looks kind of like a pirate, right? So this, book is not about playing like in the empire you're out and you're a rogue trader you're a guy who's kind of commissioned like christopher columbus or somebody by the crown but you're way out at the edges of, you know way past civilized space out in who knows what's out there baddie aliens you know and then warhammer Forty Thousand. i mean from what i've heard there's all kinds of bad there's not like one evil race trying to kill off humanity there's like i don't know seven right there's like something called Necrons. I don't even know what the heck that is. Some ancient civilization that's roboticized their consciousness. A bunch of evil robot dudes. And they've got a million different units of their own, right? And then you've got Chaos, right? Which is like, I guess, demons. But I don't know if they're supposed to be evil spirits or mutants or what the heck those guys are. But there's a concept of the war, which is like a different dimension, right? There's like It's like very much like original AD&D. There's different dimensions that you can just pop into and go... You know, the right stuff going on over there, right? So there's a whole lot of different things going on. And um, you're out there, you know, trying to either track down maybe some kind of treasure map thing. You're trying to make money. You're trying to find things. You're trying to bring back alien technology. Or you're on a mission that's, like, you know, not politically correct, so it's hush-hush. So you're kind of like this little, almost like a Han Solo guy. You're kind of like this um, independent unit, right? But you might have this, this you know whatever you call it, you might have a, your own space cruiser, right? And you're supposed to go trade with some people that, you know, might be pseudo-friendly. Who knows, right? And you've got your crew. And then, of course, like in Star Trek, the away team, you're going to go down and figure out what's going on and either make a transaction or you're going to discover an underground giant metal fortress or you're going to have a space battle, you know, Star Wars style. Or any of a number of things, right? And there is psionics in here. They call it uh, psychic powers. And then when you use warp drive, right, you're, again, challenging the dimensions, right? And in the other dimensions, that's where, like, there's demonic entities and all kinds of bad stuff going on, right? So you're psychic. From what I hear in one of the things I was reading, one of the little um, chapter books, is that your warp drive basically has to be controlled by a psychic navigator, and he gets your ship out of phase enough from our reality that you guys can warp through space a zillion billion miles away, right, to wherever you're going. But while that's happening, it's stressful because 
possible demonic entities can warp onto your ship from this other dimension. And you know, there's all kinds of dangers and roles you got to do to check out that stuff. And you might be driven mad and taken over by the demons, or like you might be taken over and not know. You might act normal and then become a bad guy. So there's you know there's just so much you can do with it. There's tons of magic, but mixed also with super science, right? So again, we're talking the intersection of horror, magic, and science fiction. Is, you know, it's a great place to be, right? And you've got, you know, the Imperium, which is like this huge space feudalism kind of monarchy thing. And um, a lot of kind of like armored knight empire kind of stylistic art stuff. You might have seen some memes about this stuff. You know, some people call him Mr. Trump, the God Emperor, all that kind of fun stuff. And then you've got these like space super tanker, you know, ships. And this might be your ship, right? And you're the captain of that ship or the captainette, the lady captain. You're, you know, you, you got, there's a lot of funny memes actually about lady inquisitors, right? Like inquisitors are like, okay, heresy. Where do we see heresy? Now, heresy is where like, you know, some humans are kind of getting taken over by the dark side, right? They're getting like, the of course, the chaos have given them some crazy abilities. So they might have taken over a planet and now they run it however they want. But it's degeneracy and there's slavery and there's people getting killed for sport and all kinds of bad stuff. You got to go, you know, the emperor constantly wants to stamp out that stuff. You know, they want kind of like law and order. They want prosperity. They want things to be cool. But, you know, humans, we got problems, right? Like our, you know, if, if a human's offered all this power, you know, tons and tons of power by some demonic entity, or say they get taken over, right? Maybe it's, it's not, a, it's against their will. It's not by choice, right? But usually it's kind of like, you know, the myths of the devil tempting you, you know, with power kind of stuff. That stuff's all through literature and culture. Like that is just supposed to happen a lot. And um, who knows, you know, because once that person's taken over, then they want to bring more demons into the world. So they might have to go to that planet where there's, gosh knows what other baddies there. And then some other baddies might oppose these baddies, right? But they both want to eat you. But, you know, hopefully you can, maybe sometimes you can be smart and play them against each other, that kind of thing. Because like Cthulhu, this is a game where you're not always going to be able to just charge straight ahead and tank over everybody and just destroy everything in your path, right? Even though you're going to have, you, you can do that at certain times, but there's going to be other times where you're up against something that's not like twice as strong as you, but more like 200 times as strong as you, right? And you're just going to have to run or use your wits to get the hell out of there or blow it up or nuke it from orbit or do something, you know, like Cthulhu was a great game like that because you're playing like a normal person in a Cthulhu game, like a Sherlock Holmes. And then you discover like some gigantic, you know, gnarly monster that's woken up way beneath something like right beneath the pyramids of Egypt, for example, you know, the thing's like a hundred feet tall and like, it's gonna, I don't know, maybe there's some magic keeping it there. I forget all the scenarios. Right? There's a lot of scenarios, a lot of stuff that can go on, a lot of ins and outs. That's where you gotta, you know, this is where this is like a huge act activity of your imagination. But here, you know, if you're like, um, if you're a big Johnny Depp fan, you know, the Jack Sparrow, that guy's like kind of like a heavy drinking, you know, armored Jack Sparrow out there. He's got, you know, a lot of style, uh, a lot of bling, you could say. <laughs> and um, so as a rogue trader, you're basically, you're kind of like a privateer. You're licensed by the crown, but you're out there doing your own thing. And you might have more, you know, you might have like one uh, vizier in the royal wants you to do that, but then you might have one of the merchant princes wants you to also look for this because he's heard, heard there's some cool alien technology wherever you're going. And maybe they put someone on your ship to help you out, right? Some ninja or some badass girl or something, guy, whatever. And um, then you might, the Imperium to keep an eye on, you might have a couple of in, um, inquisitors, right? Like these kind of highly trained, high ranking kind of like, um, I don't know, whatever you call that, kind of like a, uh, not a general, but more like kind of like a um, a field marshal or something that's going to go out there. And they might even bring along their own fighting team or something like that, you know, onto your ship. But like they're also there to make sure there's none of this heresy stuff going on. Anything evil gets, you know, flamethrowered and liquidated and anything magical, because magic's generally considered evil in this if it isn't psyker powers, and even the psychers are kind of like, I don't know if they're considered, they're kind of watched heavily by the um, 
imperial side to see if they're getting out of control. But um, so you can see like the political milieu, right? It's like a lot of people suspecting other people and um, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of counter interests, you know, within within this big, rigid kind of pseudo monarchical empire that's very, you know, hierarchical. A lot of tears going on. You know, those tears have opposing interests. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of dancing going on with that stuff. So um, as far as what I can show you with the book, I mean, this is a huge book. I hate these new books because it's like I almost don't want to touch them. They're kind of like these glossy page things. I think they did this to try to start, you know, charging. This book probably wasn't cheap, right? This is like more like I don't know how much I paid for this because this was rare. I might have paid. I might have broke the bank and got above 30 bucks on this. You know, who knows what I got it for. I forget. Might have been 30, 40 bucks. Because this is like, a, even among the Warhammer 40,000, this is a relatively rare book to actually physically get. You might be able to find a little PDF or something or buy that. But to get the physical book. But that being said, I mean, if you look at these glossy pages, first of all, I guarantee you in time, because this is such a heavy book, these pages are going to start popping out. And I hate books like this. They're all glossed up. These pages are kind of like glossed up. And I, I don't know. Some people might think this is high quality. I think this is like um, bad. And a lot of the, I, I noticed the Wizards of the Coast did this too. It's a lot of, um, I think they did it to kind of make the book seem higher quality. But these heavy kind of glossed pages start popping off the glue of the binding. You know, I ha I've had a book like that in the past and it's just a living hell. I'd almost, I'm the kind of guy, you know, I'm like about durability. Like, I almost like a spiral-bound manual book. Like, Tunnels and Trolls are absolute geniuses to do a spiral-bound book. Because when you pop a spiral-bound book flat, right, there's no pressure on the glue of the binding. Well, first of all, there's no glue binding, right? It's just spiraled. But when you pop that book like this, the spiral-bound binding is like the spine down the middle, and it's just a loop of plastic, right? And... I think they do treat the pages with a little tiny sheen of something. It's not just, you know, like newspaper. It's not just paper, paper, right? Like like when, you're, when you were back in school and you had a three-ring binder. But it's like ever so slightly treated with something that makes it a little bit tough, but not glossy like this stuff. And there's no physical stress on that book, so it'll last pretty much forever, right, unless you toss it around. You're, you're kind of a – you're kind of one of those people, right? What's the matter with you? you, know, you but you don't do that to books. You're supposed to keep them good. I learned only this year that you're not supposed to put books flat. It stresses them out. You're supposed to pop them up like this. Now, I don't know the science behind that. That's what I've read in multiple places, that you know people that like have expensive books, you're going to put them like upright, like the library does it, whereas I just pile the books up like magazine stack, right? Apparently, that like long-term jacks everything, so we'll see. Um and this has, like, it's got a little bit of a flex binding. I don't know if you can see that. It's got kind of like that dark blue little line in there where it's all glued up together. But I've seen books before like this, and I guarantee you long-term, a big. I mean, this is a book that you, know, you could whack somebody with. This thing's heavy, right? This thing's not like, it's not a palooka, right? It's a big-ass, heavy, hard hardcover book. But I just wish they had, um, I don't know what I wish for. I wish that, you know, I, I would be happier if this was a spiral bound thing because I know it would never stress itself out and never um, explode over time. But we'll see. And Warhammer is um, also awesome because they would have a lot of what you call an AD and D like demigods, right? They would have someone that's like so powerful, kind of like a hero in Greek myth, right? They're like, you know how, whatever, Hercules or. Theseus or whatever. I think Hercules was kind of like more like a demigod. He's like not supposed to be like twice as strong as a person. He's supposed to have the strength of like ten or twenty men, right? He's like really powerful. But they'd have a they'd have bad guys that are like that. Kind of like if you ever read Glenn Cook's Black Company one to three or the fourth one, the transition novel, the Silver Spike. You have like people like your character who you're gonna play most of the time, who are like badass, probably like Olympic level athlete level if you're a fighter or above and um or have some equivalent weaponry as far as magic or um deity given spells if you're a cleric or something like that or like you know you're kind of a thief assassin you're super fast but um the demigods you know you'd have groups of those people and then the leader would be like some kind of demigod and that might be like an npc 
or that might be someone that you don't even deal with and they're off fighting somewhere else. But once in a while, you interact with them. And I don't know, I've never really done that stuff. And it's like there are, you know, things in here where you can get powerful enough where you start to become a bit of a demigod. Um, I don't know how I got sidetracked on this demigod stuff, but Warhammer has a lot of that. that like, even on the bad side, there'd be like some kind of like semi-sentient dragon. I mean, there was a guy called Rogon. And he was kind of like a dragon that it was smart, you know, it was a smart dragon that could kind of like use tools. He could drink, you know, he, could, he was like a guy that could, he was pretty big, but he was like part of the bad army and he could interact, right? And I remember that from, like, I don't know, it was one of those like White Dwarf magazine articles or something, but it was the coolest character because it was like, kind of like, um, Tunnels and Trolls does that with Monsters, Monsters. Like it was a, a, a character that was a monster. And it wasn't just a dumb monster. It was kind of like a clever little sneaky monster. But he would also have giant claws. And I think he breathed fire or breathed something, acid or fire. So that was, you know, that's another thing you can weave into your stuff. Um, I don't know. I've never really used it. So you can check that kind of thing out. But Warhammer has a lot of that. There'll be like, you know, some Imperial general that's a super big demigod. And he'll kind of lead in a troop thing. And they might fight, you know, some really crazy stuff while you're off sneaking around the back trying to, um, I don't know, whatever, do something else or disable something or grab the item itself while they hold off the baddies. And uh, then you guys get the heck out of there and um, before everyone dies. So what else can I tell you about the system as far as the review? Um, you know, you've got... Regions of space, there's the accursed domain is one of these things. I don't know how long I can show you this on this cheap ass webcam, but you know, um, regions of space and, you know, different risk levels to go to different regions. Like if you know that a region is controlled by the forces of evil or chaos, you know, you're asking for it. So you've got, you know, this is a full system, so you've got the whole thing. Developing characters, you've got backgrounds, and they have all kinds of stuff, achievement points. Um, and um, so you can play this, these rules straight up. I've, I've never actually run a campaign with this. I just got this for, like, Christmas last year. But you've got stuff like, you know, cybernetic implants, You've got robots, you've got subskin armor over here, it says. Then you've got psionics and psychics. Then you have, you know, kind of like clerics. And um, they're kind of weird, right? They have, like, a lot of mechanical attachments on their body. Like, you might have seen some memes about Warhammer 40,000 with that. Like, the guy with, like, it's almost like a big robotic monocle and half of his face is metal. And then he has, like, little robot arms like Dr. Octopus coming out. Kind of funky stuff like that. And, um, but, you know, they're trying to keep the Empire together and not have humanity get eaten by any of the, you know, seven bad, bad groups. It's kind of like a little bit like StarCraft. If you ever play that video game, you've got kind of like, some, you got the humans and then you got like some alien race that's like semi sonic And then you've got like, basically the bad guys, which would be like kind of chaos. That's the Zerg. And they've got like, they're like a bunch of mutants, right? And they've got all kinds of different mutant units. See, I, I threw the Zerg into I've thrown the Zerg into campaigns because I actually love the, the um, Hydralisks and the, the Zerglings because it's like you know who doesn't like a good Zergling rush, right? You guys can look that up if you've never heard of it. Um, a lot of history to it too, a lot of lore. This is kind of like I guess culture would be a little bit like kind of like you know the Austro-Hungarian Empire or the British Empire or whatever those. I don't know if there was another one in Spain and then, you know, there's Napoleonic France, like a big empire, but it's kind of projected onto space. Right. And there's so many, so much evil and so many bad guys, like in different directions that the emperor is kind of like, you know, trying to keep, you know, trying to keep all these baddies away from different areas and keep their planets from being basically eaten or destroyed. Right. So, um, some of these baddies might not know where the humans are, but the humans have gone out there so that, you know, they know, okay, over there, you're going to have to be careful. And then there's the whole thing with the warp. And I don't know if, like, because of psionics, the baddies can eventually find the humans now that they're kind of semi-aware of them. And there's, you know, pretty much everything else you'd see in Star Trek. Right like, here's a space city for you. Can I see can we see that somewhat well? Like that. 
going the wrong way. It's pretty cool. And loaded with good artwork. And um, see, in the classic Warhammer 40,000, there's like, you know, there's some funny stuff like the orcs are some bad guys. They're kind of like the green, big, ugly guys. But the orcs are funny because they're always they're always they're not very good. I don't know if you want to call them not good, but they're not like you know kind of like organized scientists like the humans are. Although they have orc areas developed a science, but like the weapons shouldn't work, right? They just keep trying stuff by trial and error, and then they find something that works and it's super deadly, and they'll make their weapon based on it. So like they have like some guy retreating and his arms blown off or something. And he's like, I don't know, how, you know, how to deal with these orcs. It's like, you know, their weapons shouldn't work. They're based on no known scientific principle, but they just decimated our whole squad, you know, and they have to get the hell out of there before the orcs overrun everything. Cause the orcs have like a zillion different clans and they've been fighting each other, fighting each other, fighting each other. Same thing in like the, the fantasy version of Warhammer. Right. But because they're now a space empire, the orcs are, Fighting, fighting, fighting. So they just like, I guess like, it's like the class, it's like Edison, right? He did like so many trial and errors, like 900, 9,999 times he failed before he invented the light bulb. The Yorks just keep fighting each other so much that they find something that finally works that might be no, no known scientific principles based on some weird, you know, something they just kind of tried and I don't know, blew up one of their buddies. So they tried it again. They're like, oh, that's like pretty mean, right? So their weapons are based on these like non principled science and it's just hilarious to, um, and they're just, you know, they're totally fearless of death, so they'll just rush in and start destroying everything. And um, so he has to fight off those guys. And then there's, like, Chaos that's trying to, like, you know, corrupt everybody. And they've got their own, I don't know, that, that looked like it was pseudo-demonic uh, and evil black magical, you know? There's, like, demons and all kinds of funny looking guys. And then there was, like, there was another faction. Let me see if they even have that in here. Like it was kind of like the swarm, and you ever seen the Doctor Who episode with the swarm, like a bunch of evil—I don't know if they were wasps or some mutant wasps or something—but it's like a bunch of real evil, kind of hungry. I don't know if they're like bugs or like hybrid bug dinosaurs or what the hell they are, but um, there's something like that anyway, like like the swarm in Warcraft, like genetic and, and whatever it is if it eats you right it'll read your genes like a book and incorporate all your strengths into it and they might even if they eat your brain kind of get all your scientific knowledge and memories and then they'll have a smart bug kind of like air kind of, that's like starship troopers right like that kind of thing so it's like the mixture of horror and sci-fi is that that's just explosively magical i think we should have more movies based on that and um i forget if that that, that I, I forget they call it the swarm or the hive or something, but I forget if that, I mean, you can look up any of the, the, War, the Warhammer 40,000. They call them xenomorphs or something. And, um, but whatever that evil kind of faction group is called, they're just trying to, you know, eat everything in their path, right? And they're even fighting chaos. So chaos is like fighting them, but some of their stuff works on kids and some of it doesn't, but I guess they're so numerous that they just start, I don't know what they do. They, they eat the chaos or something, or as the chaos is blasting them with fire or magical stuff or whatever. And maybe, I don't know, who knows, maybe the chaos is immune to them at some level. You'd think magic would beat biology, but I don't know. I don't know. And you've got, um, so yeah, this is a huge, you know, a huge world, a lot of stuff that you could use. You've got drugs to hype yourself up. You've got cybernetic implants. You've got psionics. You've probably got something like magic. Um, you've got magic based on the deities and religion, like cleric stuff. You've got space travel. You've got the high-tech stuff. You've got guns, bombs, all kinds of shields and resistances. Um... Let's take a quick look over here. There's one even called a missionary. So I guess you're even supposed to bring the word of God out to, you know, the stars. Um, mutations. And then um, do, do, do commerce. You're always trying to make money, right, as a, as a rogue trader. So it's... um. It's another completely new, I mean, Warhammer and, and has, is kind of like the gaming universe of games workshop. 
and I think they were like British. This particular book is it's under Games Workshop license, but it's www.fantasyflightgames.com, and um, you know it's uh, it's everything you need to to adventure in the Warhammer Forty Thousand universe. Here's the back cover. A couple of kind of pissed off rogue traders. And uh, quite a book, quite a book. And I, for what I hear, it's rare, although I'm not like a collector nut. You know, this was something that was like not, I had to get this um, off of bookfinder.com. And it, um, but I went a little higher for it because it was kind of rare. And I just wanted it. You know, the whole idea of like a space pirate and a giant monarchical space empire just appealed to me for some reason. You know, and <laughs> there's just a lot. You know, War, just just the stylish um, universe of Warhammer is funny because you can get in trouble with your own people, right? Because if you're doing something that they start thinking it's a heresy or something like this, or who knows, maybe you'll get double crossed by some, you know, son of a gun who just doesn't like you or doesn't want to get have you get the credit, right? Because there's a lot of backstabbing going on in the hierarchy of a you know monarchy, right? This kind of thing. So you don't know who to trust, and you got to get out of the stars and not get eaten, and you know get all the money you can and get back alive. Good luck. Anyway, that wraps it up, and um, check it out, Rogue Trader, and uh, you know who doesn't want to be a space pirate?